<clears throat> okay, a brief recap. So, <clears throat> Barbara Barbara Enema had been uh, knocked up and left uh, for pregnancy by uh, Harry Depper Youngblade and uh, at a walrus tickling championship. Uh, nine months and eight seconds later, Eric was born by caesarean section. It had no effect on him in later life, except that whenever he left a room, he went out the window. Harry was nowhere to be seen unless you were where he was too. Then you could probably see him quite easily. It was too much for young Barbara Barbara. She couldn't cope. She couldn't tap dance either. A dire combination. 3838. Eight, eight. That's a dire combination if you haven't got your glasses on. She knew her predicament was dire and so was her goulash. It was a dire combination. Brackets see above. She determined to find her one true love of her life, Harry, and underwent dramatic cosmetic surgery to transform herself into a walrus. Catching the 8.15 train to Paddington as soon as it turned up at 11.23, she booked into a rundown hotel in Bristol. The stairs were a slope and guests had to run down them. And Barbara Barbara spent long lonely days scouring the small ads and the pans and looked in every building she could think of, uh, well mainly the fish shops, in search of her beloved. One day a knock came at her door. Knock, it went. Mrs Walrus asked the knocky, Mrs Elizabeth Notepad, the landlady, so called because of her generosity in allowing American airmen a place to land during the war. So generous was she that several of them were still bombing Germany as late as 1957, just for an excuse to come over. <clears throat> Aroo! <laughs> Replied Barbara Barbara, who had been taking elocution lessons, and after dropping the hair by in the bath one time, electrocution lessons. Mrs. Walrus? There's a man here to see you. He says that he's replied to your small ad in the fishmonger's window. Lonely walrus seeks trainer for mutual balancing act. Discretion guaranteed. Shall I send him up? Off! <laughs> Barbara Barbara, who by now was wishing she'd chosen a much easier to type name after its original comic impetus had become something of a damp squid. Her heart raced in anticipation. She raced after it in a Peugeot. <coughs> Slowly the door opened. Could it be? Yes, it was Harry. Thank fuck for that, now I don't have to think up another character. Joy <laughs> Joyously the couple embraced. Harry recognised her immediately by her perfume, Atlantic Halibut by Kim Hardkashian. They exchanged small talk. How have you been? Arf. <laughs> I've missed you so much. Arf. I've dreamt about this moment for so long. Arf. Finally Barbara Barbara could stand it no more. Harry, she cried, will you stop saying Arf all the time? Oh, that one was telegraphed like a year in advance, wasn't it? I'm sorry, my darling, he said, giving her a large hug and a small haddock. Let me go get my things. I don't have much, just a packet of Rothmans and a statue. Statue? Yes, it's me. Oh, groan. Alas, their sweet idyll was destined not to last. Harry became... <laughs> <laughs> um... Alas, their sweet idyll was destined not to last. Harry became infatuated and besotted with the landlady, Mrs Notepad. Not necessarily in that order, but it doesn't matter since they would both mean much the same thing. <sighs> he quit the entertainment world and got himself a job in the local jam factory where, in a freak accident, he met a terrible fate when he fell into a boiling vat of strawberry jam. He was killed outright, but his body was well preserved when they found it. Oh, groan again. <laughs> Barbara Barbara was no less unfortunate. Deciding to start a new life anew with Harry's lead walrus statue, she was crushed to death by it when attempting to consummate the marriage. Her last words were, Should have gone girls on top. Her remains were posted back to Ernie, who, not realising, mistook the contents of the parcel for a marketing freebie and dined on walrus stew for the next three weeks. And so, having filled in the background in light ochre, we go back to Ernie. Still, oh look, that's the first video. So sorry, Fox, if you're just tuning in for the second one. Still merrily stumbling his way along Life's Road and up Acacia Avenue. Another time, another story, the next sentence would begin, Acacia Avenue was a sweet girl, but not this time. Ever since he was a young man, Ernie had been determined to make something of his life he had. He made a failure of it, but a very good one. It seemed that in the lottery of life, Ernie's balls had never dropped. Good luck and Ernie had always been distant strangers, as indeed... What's her personal hygiene and Ernie? Now here he was, all alone on Christmas Day, with no friends, no comfort, no prospects, no joy, and no hope. And that's the end of our Christmas story. <laughs>
Er. Anyway, so that is from my book, 1001 Ways to Cook an Aardvark, which is just a book of little short sketches and top of my head stuff that I've run off. And uh, there you are. Though I am looking not ill on the front. Oh, that was a year ago.